So I think I've fixed this thing finally. I've replaced this triac and this triac autocoupler just here. These are on the upper stage. It seems to be okay now. I've got another full weld, demonstrate it on the video, and hopefully it continues to behave. It's not doing about 4.7 amps. This is on a 20 ohm load, I'll show you that. I'll turn this off and get a see the resistance. So this is a 20 ohm load. This should show around 100 volts and this should show about 5 amps but it's actually about 4.7 so it's sitting slightly low. It's powered up, it's doing well. Let's see if it actually works. It did last time, it's going to prove me wrong now I bet you. I'm going to do a whole world cycle. So it's doing 4.7 amps, 103 volts, it's absolutely fine. The voltage will increase slowly as the resistor heats up because as it heats up um, the resistance increases slightly and so as the resistance increases so does the voltage going into it and you see the current stays consistent. There you go. It worked. As far as it's concerned it did a good work. So it looks like it's fixed. I've had two of these units come back from the same site. Both of them have failed in the same way. This one has actually had developed a second fault which I've managed to fix in the end. But I've actually replaced quite a lot of parts on this board. A few resistors and things like that. Also replaced this transistor here which I did on a live stream. Transistor array, this I see here. UON 2003. Replaced one of them. And a few various parts around the board. But then I lost the display and I found out what it was. Is This jumper wire here goes over to this point. It's like a factory jumper, odd wire. That had come off. I didn't notice it was still sitting in place, but it broken. Maybe from me handling the board, maybe I squeezed it a bit or something just there. That got the display back. But what's happening now is the fault these have is that when you try and do a weld, it puts out full power, basically. It's not actually controlling the voltage like it should be, or rather controlling the current like it should be. It should be sitting about 5 amps or so, give or take a little bit. And it's not doing it, it's just shoving out full power. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not good. So both welders did exactly the same thing. I've just repaired the other welder and I repaired that by replacing the triac and the triac auto coupler All right, so this is the original triac from this one I've just taken it out and the auto coupler is in it I've already put the new auto coupler in well I'll put it in place it's not soldered yet so I'm going to solder these in and we'll try this one out and see if this one works as well hopefully that's what's wrong so NOC 3020X that's what I put in and the actual triac itself is not on there <laughs> BTA 26800BW this is what I'll be putting in the original one just says B but I'm guessing it's a BW so that's what I'm putting in and that seemed to fix it last time too so I've already done a test weld in the other unit and that worked absolutely fine after that whereas before it wasn't working the only thing I did is change those two parts I'm doing the same thing this one hopefully this one comes back to life too so I might as well recall what I'm doing so let's put a bit of thermal paste on this thing before I reinsert, reinsert it reinsert it we should put this in place. It's already got some paste on that heat sink. I'm just putting some extra stuff on, a bit of fresh stuff just to help it. Anyway, we'll whack it in. See, some a little bit of paste visage on this. It's still quite good. It's not actually drying. It's on that old. Get the legs in on that. And we'll just smush it around a little bit. Spread the paste out. We should be good. Get the screw hole lined up. There you go. So yes, yeah, it's been a uh, interesting exercise. I've spent a lot of time on these things, way too much time, and it's I don't know, hours and hours and hours trying to fault find them and reverse engineer them a little bit. Should get my other tweezers. Other tweezers are a bit easier to use. Just gotta get this lined up, and I'll get the nuts pin on the other side and do it up properly. I don't like having these wires all hanging off it and stuff, it's just unavoidable unfortunately, but that's not the right spanner, I want the other one. That's something else. And I'll just put that on with the right spanner. What I did actually find when I pulled this one apart is that the nut on this wasn't actually that tight, it didn't take much to actually shift it. On the other unit which I just repaired as well, when I first opened that one up and I was first doing the repairs on that unit, the very first time I got it, I did find that that uh, sensor was actually loose, the bolt was just about to fall off the end of it, it had come right undone. So it looks like it's maybe a, a common fault with these with those on, they're not tight enough, something to watch out for. 
So the problem with these boards is that they are formally coated and, they, and there's also a lot of thermal mass around this particular device here because it's double sided, lots of thick traces, that sort of stuff, attached to the heatsink and so on. The IC itself is pretty easy to solder, but I'm using this solder here mainly because I'm trying to get rid of it because I've got so much of it. Uh, but it's got really good flux in there so it's really good at adhering to stuff and cleaning the joints up when you're doing soldering or something from the first time. I do have my silver solder which is nice for doing really precision work but it hasn't got as much flux content so this is a bit better for this. It's a bit of a trade off anyway. We'll see if we can get this soldered up nicely. I've got to get the heat through the board as well which makes it a bit fun. I've got to try and get the solder to the other side of the board. What I did on the other one is actually solder the top side as well even though I've flowed it through. But the problem with this particular solder is it's uh, the flux is actually a bit of a pain to clean up afterwards, it's quite a hard flux to clean off. Part of that is probably because of the temperatures I use, I use quite high temperatures, so it's probably burning a little bit as well. Alright, let's do the IC. I know you can't see this particularly well, but I'm trying to get a, a wider view. Again, I'm going to try and get the flow through the board to get to the other side as well, because it does have tracks on the other side of the board. I don't put quite as much effort into these ones, because it's much less thermal mass here. Okay, let's see the other side looks like, see if it's flowed through. The IC looks fine. The triac, same as before, the middle leg didn't go quite so well. So I'm going to re-solder from this side as well, just to tidy it up a little bit. So you can see the middle leg's not soldered too well there, so I'm going to solder from this side too. I'm probably going to be in the way so you can't see anything anyway. But because it's got conformal coating over the place, that really doesn't help either. Big thermal mass, conformal coating, really too small tip. So I need to get into two small parts here, so it takes a bit more effort. There you go, that's just about there. Come on. It's not flowing on top of the ball very well. I want it to flow onto the track. So I'm trying to get it happen. The conform coating's in the way. It really isn't going. <laughs> the other one was easier than this. Hmm. I'll come back after that. Okay, there we go. I got it. I managed, I got in there with some tweezers and just gave it the conformal coating a stripe in the area to get rid of it. And I got that sorted out. The other two legs look fine, but just that middle leg was a pain. So that's that one soldered. Alright, let's put this thing back together. It's a bit of a pain to squeeze in, got to sort of go in diagonally and get the bits to not interfere with each other and <laughs> yeah, this one's not as good a fit as the other one, the other one actually fits a bit easier. Right, there we go, that's it. Make sure the wires aren't tucked behind, we'll put them on there before I forget about it. I'll put the uh, other screws in on the front and then we'll test it. I really hope this is fixed. It fixed the other one, and they both have exactly the same fault for exactly the same site. So whatever happened to one, happened to them both. The original faults happened a month ago. So I've had these for quite a while. Backwards and forwards a couple of times. I thought I'd fixed them, but it turns out no, I hadn't. Something else happened again. Actually, I think actually one of them had another fault. A secondary fault happened. So the other one's definitely working. I've got a video of that one showing it working, so they can go back and. Um, Prove that one's alright. Just about ready to test this one. Let's put it around, make sure nothing's come unplugged. Moving things around, it's all looking good still. Pop the back on. I'll swing around this way. I'll get set up and I'll come back. Alright, moment of truth. Let's power it up and see what happens. Hopefully, nothing goes bang. Alright, this blade's working. First step. Now hopefully it recognises the load is there, and if it does, then it will do a world if it's all working correctly, and hopefully that's getting around 5 amps. If it's more than 5 amps, it might have a problem. We'll see. No fitting. Oh, really? <sighs> it's all plugged in properly. No fitting again. Oh, God. Okay. Well, we've got something else going on. 
Now previously when this failed to detect a filling, it was this resistor up here that had blown open. I can actually check to see if the lines from this socket here are going to the place they're supposed to go to. So if I measure on that pin there to ground, I should get a, connect a connection. And I do. If I go from the other pin here to this resistor, I should get a connection. And I do. Other side, nothing. I'm getting nothing there. Let's just take it off beeper. Let's make sure it's actually in resistance mode. What do we get? Getting 33k. Well, it's not a 33k resistor, so that's gone. Why these resistors keep failing, that's the mystery, because they shouldn't. So that's the resistor which is blowing out, which I've just taken out, which is this one here, which is one I will replace already once. Now it's off a 3.3 volt supply between 3.3 volt rail, that side, and this side goes through the fitting, through the actual, whatever you're welding, which could be up to 20 ohms. Maybe slightly more potentially, I think. You can go up to, I think it's 37 ohms maximum, something like that then feeds back, so that's like a voltage divider and at this point um, which side? that side there yeah that point there that would be, because it's got a voltage divider system basically that's a sensing point, so this, that goes to the microprocessor so it knows what, uh, what fitting it's got on there basically you can measure it if it needs to now you can see that out of a 20 ohm fitting, which is what I'm currently hooked up as that's a 67 ohm resistor, so we're getting 87 ohm between that circuit between ground and a 3 volt, three volt rail. So that is 125 milliwatts, which is you know an eighth of a watt. So the resistor should be able to take it. Now in worst case, if it's a direct short, we're getting 162 milliwatts. So a quarter watt resistor should be able to handle this without blowing. So why are these things blowing? I can't explain that part. It shouldn't be happening unless maybe the relay that's in here is sticking and maybe it's putting voltage through it's possible other than that I've got no idea I can't explain why it blows that's the second time it's gone right you're ready to try this again I've got the power plugged in let's turn it on see if everything goes bang will it work this time now I've replaced that resistor yes it will there we go 4.8 amps putting out 104 volts, so let's do a whole world on this thing, see if it does a whole world okay. Been good so far. 20 seconds to go. Sweet. No problem there. That weld was successful. I'm going to let everything cool down and I'll do it again just to make sure it's definitely welding okay after repeated attempts. But that looks like it's probably fixed too. Excellent. Right, so I'll put this back together again, seal it all up, put my seals on it. So if it's going to fail, this will be it. <laughs> now it's all back together. So let's give it a go. This is cooled down, it's still fairly warm, it's not too bad, it's, I don't know, it's probably about 40 degrees, maybe a bit more. So, let's do it. Does it work still? There you go, 4.8 amps still again, voltage still good, I'll do a full weld on this again, and if this works fine then I'm happy. I can give it back. Temperature reading is looking pretty good, say 26 degrees. My meter over here is 27. There's a bit of accuracy on thermocouples. Plus or minus one degrees, alright. Oh, now it says 27 as well, so there you go. It says 27 too, great. It agrees now. Here we go. Another successful weld. It works. Subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff if you're interested. Blah 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 blah. Um, these things have been a pain in the ass. <laughs> but it's good, I've got it fixed. Yes. Hit the bell icon if you're interested in seeing more stuff like this. Maybe a bit less wearing it. Catch you later.